interested in using spray inks or spray paint in your arsenal but not sure where to start or which brands to use, today I'm going to share with you a few different brands and different ways you can use spray inks in your art journal. So let's get started. So we're covering both ink sprays and spray paints today as we work on this original background. I really like using the ink sprays because they're quite transparent and they come in a lot of different types and varieties and they work as a nice starting layer on your art journal page. And so I have a few here. I have some of the Distress Oxide sprays, which are more opaque, some of the Dilutions ink sprays, as well as some of these mica sprays that are a little bit more translucent. So the first thing I want to do with these sprays is make sure they're shaken up really, really well. You'll hear that as I shake them, a lot of them have little ball bearings in them and this helps mix the color because a lot of the ones, especially the ones with mica, tend to settle. So we're going to start by just adding a layer of color onto our background. And what's nice about these sprays is you can see that you can get a lot of coverage quite quickly on your page. You can see that the Dilutions ones, they are a little bit more transparent. Well, I Bit of these Distress Oxide ones are a tiny bit more opaque. And I just add freezer paper in behind. You can use parchment paper, you can use almost anything just to add in a little bit of protection to the rest of your journal. And coming in with a little bit of white, because I've come in with quite a few dark colors. Coming in with white, it helps just kind of loosen up the page a little bit. And what I find is sometimes these get a little bit stuck, so sometimes you have to physically pull up on these sprayers to get them to work. I like the spray paints just because they go on very quickly, but sometimes I do find that they would do clog easily as well. So I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the inks. Even though I love the look that they give, it can sometimes be a little bit challenging. So a bit of pink and purple going on here. I'm gonna go with a little bit of the peacock feathers. And this is where you have to be kind of careful how you put them on, because they do blend together. So depending on the colors that you want, you need to think about your color families and how you want them to spread on the page. And so that's a lot of darker color, and that's probably a little bit more than I really wanted to start with, but we're gonna run with it. What I'm going to do is let this dry, and I'm gonna be using a heat tool to dry the page, and then we'll add in another layer. So now that this is dry, you can see we have lots of different textures and variations from just a few colors. One thing to realize is that the Distress Oxide sprays react to water. So because we've added other colors on there, you'll notice that the color of the blue has shifted and adjusted. And part of that has to do with the nature of the spray because we're using it with other spray inks. It did adjust and it did change color a bit, became a tiny bit more muted. Uh, this beautiful Dilutions white linen makes for these really light areas and adds a lot of really interesting variation, which is why this is one of my favorite ones to use on almost every spray ink project. But then you also have the areas that are a little bit more translucent and you can see a little bit more of the background through. And that's just a really great first layer. So from here, we can look at adding other layers of inks and then we can move into some spray paints as well. I like starting with the spray inks because it's a little bit more translucent. Also, when you add spray paint, paint being acrylic, it's going to resist some areas of the inks. So it's being aware of which layers to add first just so you get really good results. And so let's start looking at adding stencils and masks. Basically, the positive image is the mask. Any spray that you add to it's gonna go around that image and show you more of the negative image. So when I'm adding in this negative image, this is also where you can go in with things like mica sprays. This Dilutions mica spray is actually a very subtle mica spray. So you just need to shake it up really, really well. Just get all that mica mixed in. But when you add this, you'll notice that it's a lot more translucent than some of the other sprays. And now if you pick up the image, you can see a very subtle image there. If you want that to be a little bit stronger on the background, this is where you could go into something like the Distress Oxide Spray. And for some reason, this one always likes to sp spray in a circle. No matter how much I clear the nib, it doesn't like to spray very evenly. And so I'm going to pull that up. You still have that texture, but it's extremely light. And this is also where we could flip it over and just add it on the surface here. And because of all that spray ink on top, it should transfer over. As you can see, you get a lot of different variations with this, this one technique. And I'm gonna try to come in with a little bit of the Dilutions white linen spray. I find that a lot of these ones for me, I don't know if it's I'm working in such a dry climate. They don't always work properly. So if I don't have to play around with the nozzles a little bit, sometimes they don't want to pump properly. It's just the nature of it. So I 
kind of work with what I have. But this is part of the reason I have a love-hate relationship with some of these, just because I find that they don't always give me the perfect result every time, as much as they are very easy to use. And this is gonna try to do the negative image again on this side. That's a way you can create, using masks, some little bits of texture and variety to your background. And I went a little heavy with the spray, which is why in this area here, I'm now losing a little bit of that image. So again, now we've added some more layers. These are a lot more subtle, but I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll move on to adding another layer. So this is mostly dry. I'm being a little impatient, so I'm just gonna move on. So I'm gonna try to add another mask here because I've, I've actually made a fairly dark background, but I didn't want the whole thing to be this level of dark. So I'm going to go in with maybe a little bit of the Distress Spray Stain over top of this stencil. And this one, for some reason, again, same thing. I always have issues with a lot of these ones clogging a little bit. Yeah, so this is not gonna work for me. So I'm going to move to a different spray. So I'm gonna come back in with some more of the Dilutions and try to lighten this area up a little bit. And this one likes to clog as well, but if you basically lift it every single time you spray, I find that I can usually get it to work a bit better for me. What I like about this one is because it will re-wet the colors below, you get some really interesting mixes. And so we'll add in another area there. And if you don't wanna get your hands too dirty from this, just pat down on it. That's a way of making sure that the color gets really evenly put onto that surface. And there you go. Now we're having a little bit more texture on this page. So now that I've let this dry, you can see I have a lot of color on this page. Originally, I was planning on going quite a bit lighter with this, but I'm just finding that with the bottles malfunctioning a little bit, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting that really thin layer that I was looking for. And that's maybe part of the reasons that I have a love-hate relationship with the spray inks. I find that if I can get them working well and working consistently, they work really amazingly, but I have to be really careful to keep the nozzles clean, try to keep the, it working a little bit better just so I don't run into some of these issues. But now we're gonna move on to spray acrylics. And I actually find that generally, I get much better results with spray acrylics. I like using the inks just as a base and to create melded color, just because of the fact that the colors do move together really, really nicely. And that's how I like using it as a foundational layer. But when I wanna start adding in details, I usually use gloss sprays from Dina Wakely, or I use the Pabillo spray paints. I love those Pabillo spray paints the most just because I find they pretty much don't ever clog. They work beautifully all the time. I found that actually the gloss sprays from Dina Wakely work really, really well as well. Um, I tried these Marabou art sprays. I found that I usually got a couple uses out of them before the nozzles started clogging. So I was trying to find the right bottle that doesn't clog on you and that you can use over and over again. So now that we have a really dark background, we have some choices. We can go and change the color of the background quite a bit using and more open stencil like this. It has big spaces. A lot of the acrylic spray is gonna transfer through. Or if you wanted only small details on it because you really like the background that you have, then you can add in little details with stencils like this. So when I'm looking at adding stencils to my background, I'm looking for a variety of sizes, a more open to very small and detailed. And that's a way of just creating a lot of variation on your background. And so with this one, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of spray paint. So I want to start by shaking these Deco Spray spray paints quite well. I'm using both a pearl and a transparent. And what the nice thing about this is if you go too dark, the nice thing is you can go over it with a little bit of the spray paint and lighten it up. And so if you go in little bursts like this, I'm not covering up everything below. Instead, I'm just lightening everything up a little bit. And for me, I like the spray paints because I can feel like I can control them a whole lot better. And then if you feel like that's not dark enough, give it a good shake some more. And always make sure that you just clear the nozzle into a piece of paper towel upside down just to make sure that's nice and clear. I haven't had any issues with these ones clogging. They've always worked really, really well. Um, I'm gonna come also in with a little bit of this transparent. It's basically glitter. Oh yeah, uh, I'm, actually this is the first time I've used this one. And look at how much shine you get from that glitter. And so I'm gonna pull that up. And now you can see that you have those dark colors below, but because you've been able to add things in really fine layers, that looks really, really nice. And I'm just gonna continue on by adding just a little bit of the glitter onto this side of the surface, clearing the nozzle. 
I often don't even clear the nozzles. I find that these things almost never clog, so um, I can be a little bit lazy with them sometimes. And I'm just gonna add in just a little bit more along here. I don't wanna remove everything that I've done, but I did wanna lighten it up a little bit. And there you go. So now we are getting into more textures. And so I found that I lost a little bit of my butterfly images and I wanted to bring those back in. So I can come in with a pastel green and more of this silver color. Just to again lighten up this background a little bit. I find that like we lost almost too much of what was going on. So I'm just gonna come in with a little bit of color. There you go. Now you have a lot more of that color in there. And you can decide how much of it you want to add. And by just doing this in small spurts, you get really good control. And that's that's why I've really moved to these because I, I find them a little bit easier to control. I like the colors that I can get from it. And again, that just changes it up. So if you have it too dark, if you come into the lighter spray paints, now you're lightening up your page again. And I always make sure to wash these right away. Otherwise the paint will stay permanently. It dries pretty quick. So you can see now we have a really nice, soft, um, purpley blue background, and it's great. You have lots of layers, you have lots of things going on, but I've been just kind of playing around with stuff as I've been going. I haven't really had a really strong focus on this, but now I wanna try to focus in more. I'm putting a few more dramatic layers. So now I'm gonna go in with a lot darker colors. I'm gonna add in some of that purple. Again, these are matte colors, they're quite dark. And now there's some deeper color again. And again, this is where you can choose how much deeper color you want, or if you just want to keep it really, really light. But I like sometimes in areas, just trying to add in a little bit more color, just to see kind of the look I can get. Again, I'm flipping that stencil again, so you get the other side of the image. I actually really like how that's turning out. So I just realized I, I missed a step there. I added in some gray here. I had my spray paint malfunction a little bit, so it's on a little bit darker. And so when I was pulling up one of my stencils, I accidentally didn't have this dry enough. So unfortunately I have a hole in my page, but that's okay. Cause what I'm gonna do is angle my stencil so it fills that hole. <laughs> and then no one's gonna know it's there. So I wanted to finish this up with a little bit of matte black. And you gotta be a little bit careful of the matte black because it's gonna go on pretty strong. I'm just gonna flip this. I wanna add just a little bit more of the matte black and flip it again. You don't have to stick with just one color or one design. You can add your layers on layers on layers and then flip your stencils and transfer color. And there's lots of ways that you can use these stencils to add really cool layers in your original projects. Cause I love this, but I feel like the black's kind of taken over. So you use a little bit of Dina Wakely gloss spray just to try to Lighten that up a bit. I'm finding it's going on a little funny, but that's okay. I actually don't mind the little bit of pattern it's creating. And that's just a different way of doing things. I, I found with this one, I ended up having it clog a bit and I used hand sanitizer to try to clear it up, but it's having a little bit of trouble. But that's okay. Uh, though I do find it's kind of only one side on the other. So I want to try to add in a little bit more just so it doesn't look like, oh, we're doing one side of the page and now we're doing the other side of the page. So I hope you enjoyed this video about how to use spray inks and spray paints in your art journal. I know I went a little bit crazy with the layers and that was kind of on purpose just to show you how far you can take it. Usually I don't add eight or 10 layers. I usually stick to three or four and I usually get a really nice result from it. So you can see now that it's dry it gives you a good variation of color. It goes from a very dark color to a very light color. And that's a really great way of just adding more contrast to your original background. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, if you could like, subscribe, and just hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you wanna know about any of the stencils I use, any of the spray paints I use, I have all the materials in this description below. And I would love for you to click on one of those links anytime you use an affiliate link in my video that just supports this channel. So thank you so much for your support. So if you'd like to see another video where I use stencils in the art journal, click here. This is another video that I did recently that I think you'll really enjoy. So I'll see you in that next video.